Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the fourth Kotler webinar uh, titled Data Indexing and Visualization Using Elasticsearch and Kibana. I am Tassos Papazoglou Halikas from the Information Technologies Institute of the Center for Research and Technology, Halas. Now, before we begin, the webinar is live, as you can see from this Facebook link. Uh, the webinar is recorded, so the video will be openly shared on our YouTube channel and Facebook page. So if you miss it, you can watch it there. Uh, the presentation will be shared on the Canada website after the webinar is over, along with any material that is um, that has been that must be provided. For example, uh, some code I wrote about the whole process. <clears throat> uh, please mute your microphone during the presentation. Uh, you can also switch your cameras off if you want. Uh, questions will be answered at the end. So write your questions in the chat or raise your virtual hand and ask the question yourself. Okay. So if you have been watching the Catalan webinars, uh, the previous webinars, then you already know how to install Elasticsearch. Thank you. Um, if not, Panos Kostakos from Uli University already um, covered this in the previous webinar, all these stuff very thoroughly. So just go and check it out afterwards. Um, he also presented how to crawl data effectively. So we will not give uh, detail into this today. So uh, the Elasticsearch and Kibana platform. The Elasticsearch people have some very nice tutorials in the following link. Uh, about installing Elastic, Kibana, and uh, various other things that may be useful to you. Mm, Elastic and <coughs> Kibana is a very powerful combination about visualizing your data and extracting useful information from them. Um, so in supporting policy making, it can do a tremendously good job. Um, for example, if you check one of our uh, Cutler Thessaloniki pilots, you can see all these uh, beautiful widgets that we've created, this with visualizations, uh, that they work seamlessly with each other. This, for example, this is the final product you may be creating. Um, so, now you want how I'm going to do this. I, have, uh, I just have this. Uh, um, JSON, CSV, text, whatever file, and I just want to do a visualization. Um, yeah. So, um, let's see our source files at first. We went to the page. Um, the data directory of Eurostat, as you can see in this link. Um, where all um, everything uh, that is EU specific uh, and are also grouped by category, as you can see, economy, um, industry, population, social conditions, transport, oops, sorry, agriculture. Uh, I mean, there is a multitude of data that you can download from here. Mm. <clears throat> so I'll just leave in the title. We have three different categories of data. Uh, we have economic, uh, our, the, our, the economic data set that we got from the Eurostat directory uh, has the mean and income values uh, available by age and sex um, of citizens, in the Euro area. Uh, secondly, we have the social demographic data, the unemployment rate uh, by sex, age and educational level. And uh, thirdly, we have the environmental data set that features pollutant emissions uh, from transport in uh, the in the road level. Um, as you can see, there are three codes here, the ILC, DI03, LFSA, et cetera, et cetera, that you can use to get the data set at Eurostat directory. You just search for these terms here and uh, the data set will appear. <clears throat> For the emissions uh, from transport data set, uh, as you can see, of data here, uh, you can download the data 
in many forms, as you can see from here. So you can download it in Excel, in CSV, TSV, XML, JSON. Um, we downloaded the TSV and the Excel files, to be honest, because uh, as you can see here, we have the TSV and Excel files. Uh, that's because the TSV files, the tab separate the values are easier for us to handle when creating uh, an algorithm that will index our files into the Elastic platform. Uh, and the Excel files have all the information inside so we can let's say decrypt some of the uh, the information. Um, it's easily readable for us to understand uh, what our data are comprised of. So the TSV is very easily programmatic and the Excel file to just uh, read about this data uh, and understand it. So before we can visualize this data, we have this file, um, these files. Uh, we must uh, create an index, as I said before, of the data set in, the, in Elastic. Elastic is our database, um, plays a role with our database and stores all the data there. But uh, we can just toss the, da the data there as they are right now. Uh, from a multitude of ways to index them, uh, we chose the this one, the Elastic Node.js client. <coughs> which uh, can be accessed from this link here. This is the GitHub page. Um, uh, so we can uh, index the uh, our files very easily. So the first step to create uh, an index is to create uh, what is called a structure. Mapping structure, for example, is, uh, let's say, an instruction of how our data are structured. Uh, so every data field in our data set uh, have, let's say, uh, it's like it's like an instruction for every field in our data set, how are they gonna be saved in uh, Elastic. So as you can see in the left, these are the fields. The fields of our data are created, value, geo, freak, frequency, and some other values that we can see right now. Um, and inside here are the type of data. For example, each each, each of our um, each of our data entry has uh, a date field. So our date field will be called created. It will be of type date, and its format will be only the year because on all the three data sets that we selected, um, we have only yearly values. Uh, if we had another data set, for, for example, a data set that was comprised of um, some sensor readings that were taken every second, then our format here would be year, month, day, uh, hour, minute, seconds. So it would be like this. But right now we have only year in our data set that we are um, uh, using. Um, also, you can see to the right of this, using this URL, you can see all the data types uh, in mappings that Elastic uh, can offer. As you can see, there are binary, Boolean, uh, various number like long, double, float, integer, date fields, and much, much more that you can use. You can go to the link and check for yourself. Um, so, as soon as we have created this mapping structure, um, I usually save it in a JavaScript file, in a file anyway. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can go on with the creation of our service, but it's very important to have a mapping structure. Right. So, uh, this is a script I made. Actually, it's not the whole script, but it will be available after the presentation is over. Um, that outlines the um, the four step process about um, uploading our data to Kibana, to Elastic. So at first we read local files that we have, the TSV files, uh, we read them. The first step is to parse the TSV files into uh, an array of objects and do any um, filtering that we need to do. For example, filter out the junk data, 
or some entries that are empty, just trash them so they we don't need to have empty values inside our database. I will explain afterwards when we go to visualization part why this is bad to have empty values in your database. We check uh, online to our Elastic database if this index exists of the database that we select. For example, uh, when we uh, start with the economic index, if this exists, um, then we load the mapping we created based on the data set we have loaded, the mapping we created in the previous step. Um, we check if there is no last DAO index in the last second proceeding, creating, we can create in one index or just go to the next step, which is to send our data entries to Elastic for indexing. Um, so we actually, I use, oh, sorry. Um, an await function in JavaScript, uh, which means that I am uploading data sequentially instead of parallel requests. So I won't flood the server because the server will crash if there are too many uh, requests of uh, to index. Um, what we could do differently here, for example, um, instead of using a read local file function, uh, we could uh, write a function that reads from an API so and gets data in real time and just does all that a bit more differently and uh, indexes each entry in nearly real time. But right now we have this file saved in our computer, so we're using this approach. So after everything is complete, are present. You into your um, instance of Kibana, and you you should be able to see your data now. You just when you load into your um, Kibana repository, you see this um, interface. So you just go to bottom left management, kind of settings like icon. And you to down on Elasticsearch, down on index management. I name our indices with the prefix Cutler underscore webinar. So as you can, these um, uh, these indices are now online. This means that they are saved in our Elastic database. If you can't, if you won't find anything here, it means. Uh, your process have been unsuccessful. So just check what you did wrong. Uh, so as you can see here for all our three indices, we have its held if it's if the index is okay. Uh, how many entries in each index we have under docs count uh, uh, section and the storage that it takes into uh, your hard drive, the aspects hard drive. Uh, Okay, so this concludes the uh, the elastic part of the uh, of the whole phase. Uh, we have all our data inside Elastic, and now we need to visualize them in Kibana. So to do that, we must connect our data in Elastic with the Kibana interface. So what are we going to do? We go into under Kibana into the index patterns section. We click on the create create index pattern. Create a new index pattern in Kibana. I know it's kind of uh, they have kind of the same names because in Elastic you create an index in Kibana you create an index pattern. So it's essentially the same the same thing named. Search for your Kibana your uh, sorry your Elastic index. So we can see that Kibana finds uh, this is saved in Elastic here. So if, for example, I will try to create an 
index pattern called Karma Webinar Economic. I've already created this before the presentation, so I can create uh, our charts. So this is the error that I get. There's already an index pattern called Karma Webinar Economic. This will not happen in your case. Now, in your something like this uh, will happen. We could, if if we put a star in the name, then we can create an index pattern using um, <coughs> using um, let's say a textual pattern. So I can create a Kibana index pattern using three elastic indices. Will be three. So if I click in next step, I can set which is the time filter field name. This is very important to Kibana because Kibana filters uh, in top level by date. So if you remember our date field was for created, uh, Kibana knows that this is a date field. So it pre-populates drop down with the values that we have. So this one is created. And if I click on create in this pattern, it will create it and we're done. I won't do that because this will create a kind of mer a merged pattern, as we said before. But if you do that by just uh, writing Cutler Webinar underscore economic or, you know, the whole um, elastic index name, then everything will go uh, fine. So our data is in elastic. We have connected them uh, with Kibana. And now we need to see them. Where 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 are our data? To discover the first icon to the left, <clears throat> and we see that no results matches our search criteria, which is weird. Oh, before we do that, from the left um, left uh, text box drop down. We must select our uh, Kibana index pattern. So, the webinar, let's check our economic pattern. Wait for it to load. No results. Uh, why is this happening? Because, as we said before, uh, Kibana uh, relies heavily on the dates. So, as, you, as we can see up here in corner, right now we are uh, viewing data for only the last 15 minutes. So I think our data has a time range from the year 1993 to 2018. So of course we don't have any entries with date 2020. So if we click here, we can change the data range of Kibana. So let's say I need to see data from 30 years ago to now. End of date. Now we can see our yearly data of the economic index, as you can see. Uh, with the bars here, uh, these are the data entries we have. So we can see that we have more yearly values um, from 2006 and onwards to date. We know that may the past years. Um, so before moving on, let's see some more details about the data uh, component here on the right. Absolute uh, dates, as you can see here. Relative as you uh, so before or now, it's very easy to to select your date range from here. Okay, we can see uh, our data here. These are all the data entries that are available. Click on one data entry. I can see in and on the right hand, the value of, of our data field. So we can see that the created data field, uh, it's of type date of this, it has a clock icon, so it denotes as a date. 
as we set them in the mappings file. And the value, value, <laughs> called value, it's, uh, is, uh, as you can see with this um, uh, icon here. So it's like a quick overview of what, kind, what type of uh, data you have uploaded for each entry. So it's wrong here, then you have to go back to the drawing board, change your mappings, delete your uh, indices, and then upload them again. I hope this is the case, but yeah. That all are here. You can create visualization from this icon here. It's right on the discover icon. Now these are um, saved visualizations we already have. You create new visualizations by you create new visualizations by clicking on this button and one of these <coughs> excuse me <coughs> visualization types. <coughs> there are many types to uh, and these can be saved dashboard. So, I, the icon right below the visualize is the dashboard one. Create a new dashboard that will house all our visualizations that we will create. <clears throat> so it's empty. Um, and we add more visualizations here by clicking in the upper left corner, the add button. Uh, we can select visualizations that what this is. Okay. Uh, we have many visualizations saved right now. Anyway, or we can create a new visualization by using this drop down here. <clears throat> so. Uh, I took the liberty and set up a visual, uh, dashboard with all our types. As you can see, this is all, all three of our data sets visualized. As you can see, there are many types of charts. There are some bar charts, line chart, uh, some data tables, <clears throat> reach maps, this one, and tag clouds. Um, there are also more types of charts that we couldn't uh, actually use because uh, we didn't have, for example, um, geolocation data in our data set. So we couldn't create um, a heat map or a cluster map in a map, but these are for the end of the presentation. So uh, let's say, for example, that we want to create a region map. And let's do it from scratch just to see how you can create a visualization from a visualization from uh, the beginning. From point. We create a new visualization. Um, we are clicking on region map, the source for this visualization. So our source will be Cutler Webinar Economic. So we can uh, visualize economic data about all European countries. Here it is. This icon here denotes that this is uh, Kibana index pattern, and this is what you need to select. <clears throat> this is a safe search. I will uh, I will get into that after this example. So we'll click on the <clears throat> We are ready to uh, make this visualization. 
plugin internet. Okay, so here is most of in the left side, we have to select the data entry. So we begin by metrics, the metrics. Uh, the metrics that we have will be an average of our value. The value in our data set is the income. So we will uh, get all the entries that we saved in Kibana and average them by income. <clears throat> and in buckets, we need to add a shape field because using a map, um, this will create some uh, country shapes with different colors and values using terms. And the term will be geo. The geo field houses all our country codes uh, in the data sets that we selected. And we hit play, nothing happens. That's totally fine. Uh, just also, there's a limit. There's a limit here about the size of the visualization. Let's put it to 100 to be sure. So we have to connect somehow our uh, country codes with this map. So we go to the options in the region map. We choose. Do we have European countries? No, we have world countries, which is okay. Based on this standard, the ISO 3166. And if we hit play, apply changes, we can see this visualization starting to work now. Uh, and a bit of a warning, unable to show eight results on that. Yes, because <clears throat> the country codes that are available with the data set we selected, uh, all of them are um, according to this standard, the alpha two code. So um, let's say we could go back, filter our data set and change the country codes that are not um, according to this standard. So we can uh, visualize them all in this map. So we can visualize the, the kingdom or Greece. I guess this was not intentional to, uh, I'm not sure, uh, results from Greece, um, I can assure you of that. Anyway, so to not save this um, uh, visualization here, because I've already created, created, let's to our dashboard. <clears throat> okay, slow loading. Okay, so this is our, this is what I get. So this doesn't seem that accurate. I mean, Iceland have, has the most, um, the biggest income? I don't know, maybe, but right now, um, our data are kind of um, very convoluted. So what, what do I mean? Right here, I created some filters Wait a bit. A bit. Okay. Right here. Right here. I've created some filters. Uh, some controls. Uh, we filtered filters down our data set uh, in fields like sex, age group, uh, value indicator, and unit. What that means is, right now we have our data set as values uh, about sex, female, male, and total, which means. Right now, we are aggregated values, uh, income about uh, the female population, the male population, and the total population, which means we have duplicate data here right now. We also have data about all these age groups, year 11 to 15, 12 to 17. Also, have some questions about this. I mean, do we have, we have income data about children uh, year uh, 11 to 15? I don't know. Maybe this is projected. Uh, and also total, which means we also have duplicate values here. Uh, we are also aggregating the median and the mean values. And on top of that, we are aggregating all the values about all the euro 
national currency and the purchasing standard. So what we are seeing right now in our um, charts is essentially garbage. What I mean is, let's select all sexes, all age groups, the mean values of in euro. Let me just. I want you to see what this uh, region and if my changes. Loading. Okay, so now this looks, I don't know, more in line with what people have in their minds about income in Europe. Uh, we can say that, that we, we have filtered our data set. Now we can, we have a more realistic view about our data in our dashboard. Okay, we're going to switch and it has an average income of 41,000. What about Luxembourg 32, 38? Okay. Okay. Uh, left, we have another chart that is um, uh, a tag cloud with the country code and with a larger font of the country code uh, denotes a larger income value. So let's, oh, also, when you are in your, you uh, click on the cog icon in any chart, you can edit visualization and save it. So you cannot, you know, it's a very nice shortcut to edit your visualizations like this. So if I, if I went back to the visualizations and uh, selected, uh, create a new tag cloud, I will get into this interface here, which I also select an average value of income. And my C is the geo field. I can change many things like the text scale, the position, the font size, and Right here, uh, in each visualizations, and what I did here is uh, the following. I have put um, a separate filter inside the visualizations, inside the visualization that will show me only values filtered by a value. For example, I have selected that the indicator keyword would always be mean. So uh, if everything happens in, whatever happens in the dashboard, in this chart, in the tag cloud, I will only see data about mean values. So to un for you to understand that better, if I go to the dashboard, but the tag cloud has all these values, I have selected the value indicator to be mean here, the mean value. If I delete this and I select the median value and I hit apply, uh, you can see that all the data from the chart vanishes. That's it because I have created a filter inside the visualization that uh, says, okay, show values only uh, with the value indicator as mean. So now that I'm filtering all the dashboard with the median values, there are no data for this chart for this visualization to show. <clears throat> okay, I, I hope this is not that complicated for you. So let's mean again, values. <coughs> you see that the values inside the chart 
Okay. To the next chart, we have a bar chart here, uh, which in the X axis, we have the date, which is 1995, 1996, 1997, every year. Uh, well, yeah. And we have the average income. This is time by gender, but I've already filtered our, my, my dashboard with the total values. So let's delete this filter here. And by deleting this filter, we can see the bar chart having average income um, of females, males, and total, as you can see here. So how does that work? A new vertical bar chart. Let me edit this one. As you can see, I've also filtered this chart to, to use only mean values. In the metrics, I also choose the average value for uh, our aggregation uh, because we need to do averaging across data entries because we have uh, average income, yearly income. So we can't count this. Uh, for example, if we wanted to count um, some um, um, measurements of a sensor and show it into a chart, then we could create aggregation count. So how many documents we have, some many, how many entries we have and show it into a chart. But right now, this does not apply to us because we already have aggregated value. So we can't aggregate them in a count or some more. We just average it to be consistent. Okay, so we average our income. <clears throat> and uh, our X axis is the created field. Chose to be alphabetical. So we start with 95, 96, 97. So we can, uh, you can also change that to be according to metric. So this actually sorts uh, the least or the um, the best uh, value you have, the max or min uh, income values, as you can see. I will leave it to alphabetical because I would like to know how the income of um, age groups, of uh, sorry, of uh, genders uh, went across time. And then, uh, finish with this one. I let me let me wait with it. So, as you can see here, I have two buckets. The one is the the one that I created, the x-axis. And then, when you click on to add the add sub bucket, you uh, click on the split series one. Uh, you. You can do the you can do this. You click on split series, so you can project uh, different types of data in different let's say types of fields inside your chart. So, in the split series, I say that I want to split my charts using sex, the sex keyword. So this is how this happens: male, uh, female. Like this. have all the values averaging. Okay. Let's go back to the dashboard. Let's load it again. So, <laughs> uh, let's, okay, let's also put this total here. Okay. I'm, I'm setting this filters again so we can have, as I said before, a uh, good representation of our data set. 
Okay. So in this pie chart, we have the sum of incomes for each country, which is not very informative right now because it's like how many um, entries of data that we have. Maybe we have entries for 20 years. Uh, this chart takes the income of each country for each year and aggregates them. So, I don't know. This doesn't really say anything. But, um, but okay, we go to uh, creating a pie chart. We're going into our economic data set. There we have our, this is how it starts. So in aggregation, we choose sum. We sum the income values. And in the buckets, we choose split slices. So we can have uh, the pie chart sliced. Give me a minute. Um, and we use the geo keyword as the to something like that, which is anyway, let's go back. to our dashboard. As you can see, you can also search for your same dashboard. We have many here. Okay. So, and um, what you can also do another chart is a day. Okay. Let's say we delete all the filters again. Let's wait for it to load. Here, there is a, a chart, there is a data table uh, that shows us the, the income by age range. The average income in total, the average income by in the yearly group 11 to 15, and so on and so on for every um, age group. Is G18 means greater or equal, uh, less than, et cetera, et cetera. And what we can do here is, for example, I want to filter my data and see um, information from the age range of 25 to 49. So if you can see here, this data entry is highlighted. They, they have a plus and a minus sign. So if I click on the plus sign, I can filter the dashboard right chart. So the chart changes. It shows us only this value because this is what I did. All our visualizations also change based on this filter we selected. Um, this is a dynamic way to create filters from inside visualizations in the dashboard. Uh, so where is this filter? How can I disable it? How can I enable it? All in the top left. As you can see, age keyword year 2549 is here. So this by this value. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and we can delete this. We delete this, then everything comes back as they were before. Loading. Okay, yeah, here it is. And let's check this visualization. This is the data table one, which is very 
if we go wait a minute oh. there it is the data table we oh, oh sorry we select our data we need the average value again and what did we do here we have the age range group so we split rows again as per the other uh, visualizations with the term which is age keyword the size 100 because if I move it to five, it will just show me the first five age values. You can see it here. Uh, maybe I can add more values if I add another sub bucket. Let's let's select uh, the. Instead of one entry with years 55 to 64, uh, we have three entries um, male, uh, total, and female with their corresponding values here. So the more it rows you do, the more uh, entries in your data table you get. Okay, let's go back. And another thing you can save it as a visualization, and I will be moving on to the next uh, uh, to our next data set. It's the follow: you can create uh, what is called a search query. So this one query. If you go to the discover. Anna, You can create actually um, a more inclusive, let's say, data table uh, with all the values you need and put any filters you need, save it, and then show it in your dashboard. Let's check, uh, let's select our uh, uh, index. Okay, hello. And from the left side, I want to create a data table to show uh, countries, age. As you can see, we have date, uh, country code, age. I want sex. Uh, the value, of course. Uh, and the unit. No, no, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to see the unit. So I just uh, press X to remove coding. But what I want is, I click on the add filter on the upper left corner to create a filter about unit. So unit keyword is euro. So I want only the entries that are characterized by a euro value. Uh, and give us a date and country. If I save this, no, come on. I can save this search and use it as a visualization in my dashboard. I can add also multiple filters. For example, uh, let's see. Keyword I want to be, or maybe I don't want to be because we, you can see we have multiple operators. Uh, I don't want to be, uh, sorry, not that unit, but the uh, indicator 
is not sorry indicator keyword this is very important you have it has to be a keyword is not media so this you can see the filter not indicator keyword medium so you can mix and match filters and create uh, a very um how do you say that in a chart that is very very tailored to what you need to to um to create okay go back to that let's go back um Let's wait for it to load again. Actually, this stage uh, value indicator unit, uh, in essence, they're kind of like more user-friendly ways of creating a filter up there. Because if I use drop down to create a filter, it is there in the top left. So I can either delete it from its control pane or from here. As you can see, it's deleted. Okay. Go to the next data set. To the unemployment rates. Okay, so we have another type of chart here. We have the metric uh, chart. Make Um, so, our second data set have unemployment percentages by country, by age group, I think also by sex, I'm not sure, yes, also by sex, and by educational level. Uh, it's based on the ISCED 2011 um, that um, level of education standard. Um, the levels here zero one two three all up to eight what that means and what that gives is this kind of levels and then uh the ISED level from zero to two three to four five to eight um no education and the total one so i have created a metric widget here metric visualization that gives us the percentage of unemployed people based on their education level. So we see uh, people that got, uh, that were in the first stages of education or non-educated at all have the most, uh, are the most unemployed, have the most, um, how can I say this? Uh, like from the whole percentage of the unemployed people, they have the highest. Uh, we can see that um, the, the last, um, uh, educational group has the least percentage of uh, unemployment. Very easy to do. You can create a new metric. There it is. Whoops. Now we're in the social um, data set. Um, and I can't remember how I created this. It's a percentage, so we averaged it. Yes. And we split our group using a term which is um, the ISCD 11. I think there are five levels, but let's, let's put this ISO 10 just to be sure. Okay, yeah, there it is. Uh, you can get a percentage mode, but it will work if your values are already percentages. <laughs> so I will not be using this. Uh, you can show labels, you can, 
change the style. You can do okay, you can do many, many things, but it doesn't mean anything. Okay. We have a bar chart. Uh, that is actually the same as the previous bar chart, uh, but in a more rotated way about the percentage of age groups, unemployment in age groups. We have a line chart here, which is the social unemployment by country. I'm looking at you, North Macedonia. Not things are not going good, uh, but Switzerland is very good. That's okay. And as we can see here, is there are some mean, uh, mean. I don't know. There are some values for uh, all the countries here. What is interesting to note here, and I think I don't have that much time, uh, is we have created a bar chart here that shows the unemployment uh, by sex in all countries uh, with um, using an, the date as the x-axis. So you can see 23 through 2008, uh, mostly more women than men were unemployed, and the unemployment rate was steadily uh, decreasing. And from 2009 and onwards, it shoot up. So maybe this is because the European economic crisis erupted during 2008 and 2009. So 2014, you can see um, steadily, um, steadily dropping again. Uh, how do we create this uh, chart? Let's create a bar chart. Vertical bar. There it is. Popular webinar social. Okay. Averaging our percentage, we want our x axis to be the date. So we use the term created. Let's see. Okay. Only five values because our size here is five. I will crank it up to 100. It's an overkill, but it's okay. There it is. It's sorted. Uh, by uh, value, which is something I don't really like. So I order by alphabetical and ascending from minimum to maximum. Three, four, nine, four, five, 96, 97, 98, so on. Okay. And now I need to put data about the sex in the chart. So I click on the app. I do the split state. If I click on the split chart, I'll create another chart from below this one. So it's not that good to uh, get useful information out of this. Click on split series. I select aggregation terms, select a field, and I select um, six. Here it is. And apply. I kind of don't like this because to be stuck on top of uh, each other. It's I can't uh, really seem to know what's going on. Let's go to this metrics and access options here. We can see that the mode, the chart type is bar. So actually the bar chart and the line chart is kind of the same chart. So if you start with a bar chart and say, hey, hmm, I wouldn't a line chart to be honest, not a bar chart. So you can just change it here. I don't know what this will show. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Uh, or oh no, no, I want it to be an area chart. Okay, let's see what an area chart looks like. Looks good. I still want a bar chart, but I don't want it to be stacked. So if it's normal here. Yes, this is what happens. We'll create three bars, the one next to each other, for each of our entries. Now I can, um, I can see what's happening. I can see which uh, which uh, sex has the most unemployment 
in which it has the most un un unemployment <coughs> values. That's how you do that. And if um, something that I didn't got into it as information is, I can also change the position of the legend. Legend is here. So if I just select top, it goes. So we can have more uh, horizontal space for our chart. Yes, maybe, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and actually, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, we will get into the uh, into the uh, third data set right now. Uh, so we can see how you can put, you can create a line chart with some custom thresholds. Um, so our third, data set is about pollution emissions from transport in a road level. So they are also yearly. Uh, we can select air pollutants as we see here, and we can also select the country. Okay. A line chart, uh, that is, that actually has uh, all the three air pollutants, as we can see, line charts here, as lines in this chart, uh, from 1993 to 2017. And this is related to the threshold. Uh, the threshold, I think it's um, the values set by the European Union that all countries had to uh, obey. They had to have uh, the emission values below of uh, of a threshold. So this is like in percentage. So we see that in 1999, uh, some happened and then uh, all countries went under this threshold in 2009. So threshold, let's create, we go to the line chart. So as I said before, if you create a line chart, or a horizontal bar, or a vertical bar chart, or an area chart. This is the same chart. It's just a different uh, configuration, a different option, just to show it how you want. So let's read chart. Butler webinar environmental. Here it is. I want my aggregation to be the average values. I want my buckets to be uh, time. So terms create. Let's see it. Create. Cramping up the size. This tells me nothing. Uh, I want to split series by the emission type, which is the air pollutants. Okay, now it's better. Yes, legend to the right, I will put it in the top. Yes. Uh, but I want this threshold line. Where is this threshold line? Where is the threshold line? In the panel settings. I think, yes, there is an option that's called threshold line. I just enable it. Uh, we have a percentage value, so my threshold value is 100%. I just set it as 100% and I enable it. There it is. Okay, can also change the experience. This is how you create a thresholded line chart. You can also create a bar chart and put a threshold line there. Um, in all these types of charts, you can put a threshold if you want. It's very helpful. 
we don't get much into it is the global filtering of the Kibana dashboards. Um, all of that, all of, all of our data sets have uh, values that are unique to them. There are some values that are the same. For example, in geo field, so the country field. So if you go here, what's happening here? So, oh, I can relax the index pattern, but it doesn't matter because all our uh, index patterns have this field. So I create a field with geo keyword, which is our country field here. If, uh, if if you don't like you know how these fields are are called, then you can go back to your mappings file, change it, then re-upload it, and it will be shown as the name as you want. Just a quick reminder. So I want the geo keyword to be. Which country do you want to see? Let's see stats about Greece. And save. Loading, 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 and I think because uh, our country code was wrong. So you can see charge in the economic dashboard to be filtered by this uh, country filter here, the mean income by gender. This makes sense because we only selected one country. We have age range for groups. We can also sort. Let's see who makes the most income. In Greece, it's 55, 64. Makes sense. Maybe. Uh, Let's go down to the education here. We can see the unemployment rate. Wow, this is, this, this is not that accurate. Anyway, see all our, um, all our charts are filtered by this value. This are the global filters. Um, and I think, actually, that, I think, uh, wait a I, for, I forgot. Instead of using only the uh, Kibana um, visualizations that are available, you can create, you can add visualizations that other people created uh, in the form of plugins. Uh, Kibana can load plugins, but you have to search the internet, search uh, GitHub to find uh, plugins that are... Um, that can be installed to your Kibana installation um, and then um, uh, use them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, I think that's everything. I don't think I have anything else to add. Uh, any questions? Wait, because I'm not sure I can see the questions. Let me check. Mm, okay, the chat. Okay, so are there any questions? Let me check Facebook. I don't seem to have CT. No questions addressed. Anyway, um, 
there are some things that I had no time to present, like uh, more in detail um, uh, what happens when you get the TSV files, the, the raw files, uh, before you index them to Elastic. So I will have available um, the, the code to do that. So uh, this whole example uh, could be reproducible by you if you would like. So everything will be provided to you after the, after the webinar is finished. Um, so I guess if there are no questions about this, um, we are okay. Uh, it was nice uh, having you. Uh, stay tuned for more uh, more of the webinars next uh, Tuesday. Okay.